welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the OM Times Radio Network. Well, hello and welcome to the Intuitive Transformations Radio Show, where you will find tools you can use to change and transform your life every Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on the OM Times Radio Network, the voice of consciousness at omtimes.com or iom.fm. This is Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I want to thank you for joining us today and being an Intuitive Transformations radio show listener. Today is Wednesday, February 21st, 2018, and last week on Valentine's Day, the world witnessed the aftermath of the 18th school shooting here in the United States. To say that we are living in interesting and unpredictable times is an understatement. We are living in a day and age where information travels around the world instantly and simultaneously. And most of that information is now so shocking and dramatic that it literally takes your breath away. We can easily recognize that the world is changing and changing fast. And when we hear the devastating news that lives were again lost in a tragic and senseless manner, it cuts into our hearts and it affects us emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and even physically. It creates feelings of helplessness, hopelessness, and overwhelm. It is impossible to deny that there is something seriously wrong in the world when a child is in so much pain and anger that they inflict that pain onto another by taking the lives of their teachers and fellow students. We are obviously living in a world where fear, anger, rage, and self-hatred are at epidemic proportions, and it is time for us to heal. Humanity as a whole must take a look at our suppressed anger issues, which are now expressing as violent rage, and we must learn how to heal it. We cannot afford to bury our heads in the sand any longer. There's been a lot of discussion about mental health being the underlying cause of the violence we see far too frequently in the news, but I honestly don't believe we have a mental health issue as the cause. I do believe we have an anger, fear, and hate issue, hate of others and hate of self. We are living in a time where we must take action and utilize the countless resources that are so easily accessible and available that can guide and teach us how to heal the soul wounds that we have occurred in our lives. And if you believe as I do, also from past lives and even the wounds stored within the ancestral DNA held within our bodies. I hope that there will be something said in today's show that will jump out at you, grab your attention and give you hope that emotional healing is not only possible, but that it is possible for you and for others in the world as well. I hope that you will hear something today that will start you on your own personal journey into self-healing and the freedom from your inner critical voice of self-judgment and the harsh judgmental thoughts that you hold toward others. With 2018 being the year of the old soul, the intuitive inner healer, this, this is the year that the shadow aspect of the soul will become even more pronounced and apparent, literally forcing us to look behind the veil of the external world for our answers. Because 2018 is the year that we begin to heal from the inside out. I see it in the books that come my way, the number of books that have been authored over the last few years that focus solely on emotional healing have increased exponentially because the need is great and it is time for humanity to wake up to the truth that redemption from pain does not come from an antidepressant, 
sex, alcohol, or any other mind-numbing drugs. As If we want life as we know it to change for the better, then we have to look honestly at our inner wounds. And if you are ready to work with someone one-on-one and, one, one on one, and you're not sure where to begin, I invite you to contact me or you can contact my guest for today because I promise you that if neither of us can help you, we will point you to someone who can. We have to remember that we are all one. We are each an individual piece of a complex puzzle called humanity. And as each one of us takes it upon ourselves to do our own inner healing work and heal the drama and the trauma of our past, then we can open the door for others to do the same. And that is how we heal our world, one soul at a time, starting first with ourselves. If you would like to learn more about me and the work that I do, please visit my website at intuitivetransformations.net. And while you're there, sign up for my monthly newsletter and receive a free guided meditation that will help you in releasing worry, fear, and anxiety. That is my gift to you that I hope will support you on your inner healing journey. Today's show is going to continue this discussion on inner healing. I have joining me today, Leah Guy. Leah Guy is an intuitive transpersonal healer, a spiritual teacher, professional speaker, and media personality. She offers wisdom from a lifetime of personal triumphs and more than 22 years of experience helping clients transform their lives from fear and disconnection to heart-centered, soulful living. Leah is a sought-after inspirational speaker who has appeared on numerous television and radio shows discussing topics such as meditation, the mind-body connection, energy medicine, intuition and addiction, as well as emotional and spiritual healing. Also known at the, as uh, the owner of, uh, I'm sorry, also known as the Modern Sage, <laughs> Leah has her own product line and owns the Modern, uh, the Modern Sage Healing Center and a girl named Guy Productions. Leah lives in Jersey City, New Jersey, and she is joining us here today. Leah Guy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's, it's just a pleasure. As I mentioned before the show, it's always lovely to have someone on who's like-minded and does uh, work that really helps to heal humanity. So, Leah, before we start to talk about your new book, which is called The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace, how did your healing journey begin and what brought you to energy medicine and in particular emotional healing? Well, I don't know. Um, it's a hard question. I don't know exactly when healing journeys begin. I don't think anyone sets out and says, okay, I'm going to start my healing journey now. But, um, you know, there's an accumulation of years that as we all go through trials and tribulations and events and so forth, I had several in my youth, um, from anxiety, I had an aunt that was murdered, I had parents that were divorced, I developed an eating disorder, I had, you know, so many things that kind of went on in, in that relatively normal childhood, and then, um, you know, coped as best as one can, and then when I was in my early 20s, I, I was in a sexual assault or rape, and it was after that time that I kind of hit a wall, you know, of I knew that I wasn't okay and I didn't know how to get okay and all the other things that I was dealing with before were just getting worse. And so, um, you know, of course I'd tried therapy and different drugs and diets and all kinds of things. And eventually I, uh, found myself at a school an inner energy healing school, but also that was very focused on, uh, the mind body connection, meditation, and so forth. I've always, ever since I was young, I was very interested in spirituality, in um, physical health, and you know, just understanding the world from a different perspective and how we operate from a different perspective. Probably as a means to cope. But at that point, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. So that's kind of what brought me to it. Um, 
I suppose. And I think I've just always been on it. You know, I, it's easy looking back to say, oh, this was the thing that sent me there. But, you know, it's truly when we're going through a trauma or when we're going through a difficult period in our life or a breakup or as children, you know, being bullied or feeling not good enough or not pretty enough or having emotionally dysfunctional parents or being whatever, you know, there's so many things that go, go on. We don't have a, a consciousness, usually an awareness that says, um, oh, I need to start healing, you know, and, and I think that, you know, for me, that's why I'm passionate about trying to get information out there so that if a person is struggling and doesn't know what's available or doesn't know that perhaps they need to get on some kind of, um, you know, deeper inner journey, then they can at least get the information because it's just not readily available or it hasn't been. Mm. So, um, let me ask you this then. Um, you talk about letting go being the worst advice for healing. And mm -hmm. uh, what exactly do you mean by that? What's your definition of this quote unquote letting go? And, and why is that uh, not so great for healing? Well, it's, um, you know, a lot of people, therapists, gurus, seekers, everyone's kind of going to this um, it's really kind of become a prescription of, oh, just let go, just let it go, just let the thoughts go, let let the feelings go, just move on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to me, it's a very dangerous, um, it's a very dangerous way to attempt to, to live. First of all, it's almost impossible to let go like that. If it were possible, everyone would be doing it and we'd just be able to turn our cheek and go the other way. It's, it's just exactly. not feasible. Mm -hmm. And second of all, there's nowhere to let it go. You know, it's um, really, uh, it's, it's like antithetical to the whole belief system that the same seekers are espousing on one hand saying we're all connected and everything is one and the universe is beautiful and everything happens for a reason. You can't believe that and then try to carve out and cut out the stuff that you don't like. It's just, you know, it, it makes for crazy thinking, crazy feeling. So um, I think it's really, like I said, I think it causes anxiety. I think it um, can create a sense of dissociation with people. Um, it's just a dangerous way to go. We need to learn how to accept what is real. We need to learn how to um, accept that pain often comes with love. We need to not be afraid of our feelings and our inner world um, all the things that those feelings of rejections and loss and, and pain and so forth trigger in us from our youth and and uh, growing up and learn how to be in the reality of our authenticity, of our feelings, of our emotions, and not try to escape them constantly. When we escape them and just, you know, tell ourselves, oh, I'm just going to forget about this person um, or I'm you know, I'm going to create an, an anger scenario so that I don't have to feel the, the pain of the loss or what have you. That's it, it. It's we're going to be affected somehow in the future, whether it's insomnia or nervousness or, you know, obsessive thinking or you know, anxiety or different things that will present itself. Because when anything's unresolved, it's going to keep festering somehow. So I think the best way is to really learn how to to process and and be with what is going on. So when uh, you look at Buddhism and they talk about detachment and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and yet there are people that they practice that and um, they claim they find a lot of inner peace with that. But what is your point of view about det detachment when it comes to that? I mean, I know you, you just talked about letting go being impossible, which I totally agree. I mean, how do you just turn off your emotional body by just deciding I'm going yeah. to do that? It does not happen. It doesn't work. But through meditation, um, many people who practice Buddhism also um, uh, propose this concept of detachment. But yet in your book, you talk about mm -hmm. um, you have a different point of view about detachment and how it relates to emotional well-being and happiness. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, there's detachment of many things. You know, there's detachment of physical items. There's detachment of thought. There's detachment of um, relationship. I, I, you know, I don't want to get into the religious, like talking about different religious beliefs because everyone has their own and that's perfectly fine. And I'm not Buddhist. So, you know, I've studied a lot of Buddhism and I think I understand um, what they're referring to. But what I'm talking about is this sense of um, 
um, learning how to be, you know, with and and be near and in instead of reacting from triggers or reacting from pain, um, learning how we can find our center so strongly and so confidently that we build strength within. So instead of, um, you know, it is peaceful to just turn everything off and go away for a weekend, a night. Some people do it for a month or a year or a lifetime. Not everyone can do that kind of um, lifestyle, nor, nor is it, you know, necessary. I think that, you know, we are living in a world that in, includes a lot of different stressors and environmental and relational issues and so forth. And if, you know, the, the, the idea that we can just um, detach from something is, it's kind of like the letting go. It's like separating yourself from that which you could either learn from, that you could um, give to and offer your love, services, compassion, empathy, and so forth, and um, and heal from. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But for me, I just, um, I don't want to say it's like an easy way out because it's not. A lot of people find great relief from different religious practices, such as, um, you know, a solitude of living kind of thing or being in regular meditation for long hours. And that's fine. And that's wonderful for them. However, for someone like myself, I want to be in the world. I want to be amongst people and, uh, and do my work. And I want to grow in a way that is, you know, where my feet are on the road, you know, and, and I feel it and I smell it and I sense it and I touch it and um, learn how to be with it. So I think emotionally speaking, yeah. Yeah, that's really important because you cannot separate yourself from the world. You have to be in the thick of it, you know, like you said, with your feet on the ground. I love that. Um, We'll be back in just a few minutes after the break. This is Sylvia Henderson. You're listening to the Intuitive Transformations radio show on OhmTimes.com. We'll be back. Please stay tuned. The future of Internet radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free ascendinghearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I did the same things over and over, until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations Radio on OMTimes.com. This is Sylvia Henderson, your host. And I have with me today my guest, Leah Guy, and she is the author of The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace. And Leah, 
let's talk about your book. Um, in the book, you you give some great in-depth information about the chakra systems. Um, for those who are listening that are not familiar with the chakras, would you mind sharing with them um, what the chakras are, where they are, and the role that you believe they play in energy medicine and healing? Sure. Um, I'll give a very brief. There's a lot of information about chakras and energy medicine. And, um, you know, in the book, it's fairly detailed, but in a very succinct way. I think it's a practical guide so someone can go and look at symptoms and emotional symptoms and physical symptoms and see what might be out of balance. But essentially, the chakras are just energy centers. Um, they're the main vortexes of energy that we can look at and measure around our physical self. Everything has energy and we also have energy and we look at um, typically in the western culture we look at the main seven or eight chakras although there are over a hundred chakras around your body but in the book i just talk about the main seven and how they correspond to our emotional and mental and physical health so just like all things that have energy the energy is reflection of the thing that is that the energy is around and the, th the, the body or the thing also emits a certain energy as it, it changes its vibration and health and scenario. So it's, it's a subtle way to kind of get a reading on what's going on in our body, in our um, patterns, our habits, and so forth. So, for example, um, the root chakra, which is down, uh, it's the first chakra, it's down near the groin, the legs area, and... You know, this, this chakra is a strong energy center that helps us feel grounded and safe and supported and connected and um, part of our experience here. This, you know, kind of that carnal, animalistic um, presence that we have. And some people really struggle to be grounded because or feel um, connected and safe because they're they're kind of a personality type that is more heady and lofty and flighty and you know they just have these traits in ayurvedic medicine that they would be like a vada a dosha if you know anything about ayurveda but regardless we i think we all know people like that that never seem to really have their feet on the ground and and um, so they have to really work at feeling connected and feeling grounded and and being part of this this earth in a real tangible way and when we're ungrounded or feel uh, uprooted, we often have feelings of feeling flighty or unable to focus or um, disconnected, anxiety, fear, uh, just a general sense of maybe feeling lost or like you don't belong here, you don't know where to go next, or you don't quite feel at home in your skin, or you don't quite feel part of your family. So these are all things that people might experience if their root chakra and or that whole energy of being ungrounded is out of balance. It's not fixing the chakra will not fix all the, you know, all of that. <laughs> a lot There's a lot of misconception about energy healing and chakra work and so forth. While it's good to work with someone if you're not or do the work yourself to align and balance and open the energy centers and make sure they're healthily functioning, it, it is really more of a matter of, um, correcting the pattern and the emotional and mental and physical properties of our experience, not just open the chakra and now you're all set. It doesn't work like that. Um, energy fluctuates and moves and it's always going to respond to the main pattern and health of our physical, emotional, and mental selves. So I want to make that really clear because although I do energy healing, and I do it in conjunction with a lot of talk therapy and with physical body work and with a lot of um, homework suggestions like what I recommend in the book because it's not just a quick fix of come in see me and now your chakras are open and you're good to go for you know a while um, so anyway it's it's just another l layer of that holistic experience that we talk about but a lot of people still are having trouble integrating into their life you know and and I do think it's very important no, I, I agree. I think that's very important that people know, too, and and because uh, there is a lot of information out there about, well, just open your chakras or have them spin in the right direction at the optimal speed and your life will get better. It, and it is there is a lot more that's involved than uh, that goes yeah. beyond that. And so 
Um, I know you just spoke about that root chakra. Can you talk a little bit about the second chakra? Because I know that there's a lot of people out there that kind of struggle with that because that has to do with creating. Sure. Yeah. The second chakra is very much about um, creativity, about procreating um, and really getting in touch with what turns you on. You know, we think of it often as like a sexual energy, but it's really the energy of our soul and what we, um, what we're here to do and what we love to do and what we're passionate about. It also extends into, you know, how we are vulnerable and intimate with our lover and loved ones and our family and our history lineage and so forth. So it, it, they're all the chakras are important, you know, and that's why in the book you can read through all the, details and stories and examples and so forth. Um, but the second chakra is very closely related to the first chakra, meaning if the first, if you're very ungrounded and, un, you know, unstable, it's likely that the second chakra and that energy is also going to be kind of um, askew, if you will. And, or the second chakra, all the chakras play off of each other, you know, regularly, like the throat chakra and the heart chakra, they it, it creates a story in our, of our mm-hmm. life, essentially. So, again, it's not just targeting one thing in one area and going, oh, that's my problem. We still have this very, you know, segregated, separated idea of health, like going to the um, hand doctor, you know. And, yes, I know a hand doctor specializes in hands, and that's who, at this point in our society, we do need to go to. But we have a very, um, like, just divided sense of health but when you're talking about holistic health and in particular energy you can't really just talk about one area i mean you can talk about it for sure but as far as um, looking at the whole piece there's generally a story that comes about when you're looking at your whole life you know and yeah. your whole wellness it's so it gets holistic. really interesting it's all about a holistic perspective and a point of view and, and looking at the whole right. the whole picture. So you talk about post-traumatic emotional disorder in your book. Can you share with everyone what that is and what that looks like and why it's important to address that? Well, um, I call it PTED, post-traumatic emotional disorder, as opposed to PTSD, which a lot of people are familiar with. You know, there are a good number of people who have PTSD, and, and you can have PTSD from an emotional event, such as a traumatic breakup or someone cheating on you, that kind of thing. However, most people have PTSD, they, it's as a result of, uh, you know, a one-time traumatic or being in the line of fire in the war or, you know, um, or a one-time traumatic event like a house fire or something along those lines where in PTED or emotional disorder, I talk about it as a, as a disorder that most of us have to some degree or another, just simply from being alive and from the, from the reality that as children, we don't have the, the capacity or the information of how to truly process through our emotions. Um, some parents do a very good job of, you know, helping a child work through feelings and so forth. But, Often what happens is when we experience things, especially in our formative years into our teen years, you know, we keep quite a bit of that private because the way that things strike us or make us feel, you know, it's new and it's um, sometimes alarming or very upsetting or maybe we're extremely proudful or prideful of something or that we're not sure if we should be. There's so many emotions that go on as we're developing and learning um, how to be autonomous in the world. And as a result of just people shaming us or us not feeling valuable enough or being bullied or, or going through our first breakup or watching our parents struggle or being a child of an alcoholic or, you know, all the different scenarios, we um, have these emotional responses that don't get healthily processed. And then what happens is years later, usually as a person starts to enter into the emotional maturity, you know, early 30s, moving into their 40s, and they're starting to reflect back on their life, they're starting to have their own families, they're starting to re-experience certain things that they experienced through their childhood, and they're starting to have flashbacks or understandings or aha moments, or maybe they're crippled with anxiety or skin issues or the inability to feel vulnerable or intimate with their lover or what have you. So these things are often a reflection of unprocessed emotions from, you know, the majority of our life. And it's 
the the disorder I think you know ranges just like PTSD on a kind of a scale. And um, what they're finding with PTSD and what I work with a lot in my meditations is learning how to just be with those emotions and let them be present and show up and how we respond to them as adults will help us shift through and, and really start healing through those, through that pain. So you do talk about meditation in your book and um, you know, in a, and I think you've already touched on one of the benefits of meditation is that it does allow you to tap into that inner deep well of what's really there. And so when you're working with a client um, and some of the things you offer in the book is to um, how to face that, how to how to um, deal with what comes up in meditation, because, as you know, when people are asked to meditate, if they're not seasoned meditators, they don't want to do it because all of a sudden they're, they can't seem to shut their mind off um, because the mind finally says, oh, we get to give up the goods. So so mm -hmm. um, what do you suggest um, that would help someone who's had previous experiences with meditation that make them feel like they can't be successful at it, that it's going to be too difficult to quiet my thoughts? Or what do I do with these emotions that have been suppressed that are now coming up and greeting me? Well, I think, um, you know, for anyone going to a guided meditation class or like I'm, I teach, I, I help a person through Skype. I do meditation sessions over Skype with a person. It, uh, being in the midst of someone who can guide is often very helpful and makes a person feel safer. Um, and in particular, you know, live in person is excellent way to, if, if you can allow yourself to be um, vulnerable, you know, amongst the group. But, you know, sometimes emotions do come up, sometimes memories come up, and and really a good guide will help a person to be able to sit with those emotions and feelings and not, um, you know, not have that triggered response that is from the past, but to learn how to separate your soul from your mind and um, create a different relationship, a different dynamic. And then that begins to soften the experience so that the experience is still real and we're acknowledging it and we're seeing it and we're hearing it, we're listening to it and we're feeling it. But we can do so in the safety of, um, you know, in the safety of our true self, which is that the strength of our spirit and our soul and our higher consciousness, as opposed to just reacting from this human response of, oh my God, this might happen again, or that memory is so terrible. So it's, you know, it, it takes practice and work, but also, you know, for those that are intimidated by meditating, I always just say, just sit down and be quiet. You know, I wrote an article for Elephant Journal. It's just, it's called sit down and shut up. You know, don't try to make it a big thing. We all try to make everything a big thing, especially in the healing process. And sometimes it doesn't need to be a big thing. Sometimes it just needs to be, you know. So just sit down, turn off your cell phone, turn off your computer, or set a timer on your cell phone for three minutes or five minutes or whatever, or one minute. It doesn't matter. Close your eyes, focus on your breath, and just be with yourself for a minute. And you start doing that, and maybe it'll become a place where you want to come home to, you know, and, and start feeling a little safer each time that you do it. And just follow that see what happens yeah and and um you know you talk about spiritual mapping in your book and you talk about emotional workouts in your book and so um what are emotional workouts and why are they so important well emotional workouts are very much like physical workouts they're um they're equally important in my estimation because they keep us healthy and practiced at uh, feeling our emotions, at acknowledging our emotions, of recognizing and being aware of when what we're actually feeling versus those reactionary triggers from our past. And um, if, we, if we just ignore the, our habits, our patterns, our past, our feelings, then we keep recreating the same thing over and over and over, which we do anyway. So mm -hmm. we're already challenged with that. Um, so the emotional workouts are just things like, you know, that we can do each day. Some of them are very active, like gardening or putting your feet on the sand. Some of them are very emotionally cathartic, like journaling different things, um, the meditations. Um, some of them are artistic because I think art is a wonderful way to express some of the feelings that we can't easily talk about. So the the workouts are just exercises. If, if you read through the book and you see there's a, a 
maybe a chakra or an energy or a emotion that you're suffering with that's kind of got you stuck or blocked and held back, then you can look at the emotional workouts in that chapter and just use them as kind of some self-care tips, you know, of what you can do each day. Mm -hmm. And then you also talk about spiritual mapping, which I already alluded to. So what is spiritual mapping, you know, and um, how did you come to develop it and how can people use it to find peace and happiness? Well, spiritual mapping is a technique that I often use in workshops. Um, and I came to it because I kept recognizing that no matter how long you spend with a person and in most of my private sessions, we continue to look outside of ourselves for a blame, a person, a reason, excuse, a situation, you know, a financial crisis or whatever that resulted in why we're not happy right now or the, why we are not feeling our best right now. So the mapping is a practice that you can use. It starts with the heart and then it, and it leads kind of a path or journey to the current moment, which might include, you know, I hate my job, um, my boss talks down to me, et cetera, et cetera. And usually if we get really honest and take the blame out and take anyone else out of the scenario and get honest about, you know, why we made certain decisions, why we wanted that kind of career, why we interviewed for that particular job, why we took the job, why we stayed at the job, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We'll come to a place where we made a decision based on fear rather than from our heart. And this isn't just about fear and love. It's really about learning how to be uh, responsible for our choices and recognize that um, because of the circumstances that we're in, it's not, you know, due to just the, the other person. We have many, many, many options in our lives, many options. And when we're stuck or afraid or um, feeling lost or like unworthy or not paid enough or we can't stand the person we're around and we're not doing anything around it, sometimes we have to back up and see where we chose. Uh, maybe we didn't believe we had it, what it took to get the job we really wanted. Maybe we're using fear of money and security uh, to not take a few weeks off and hunt for a new job. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things. Maybe we secretly like the self-sabotage we endure at work every day because it keeps us being victims. You know, but this is the, this is the part of the responsibility of healing that's on the person. It's nothing, you know, I try to help lead a person to that because at the end of the day, whether they come see me or you or, or many other therapists and so forth, they have to have skills to be able to safely self-reflect and um, step into that emotional maturity of taking ownership for their life. Not yeah. to say that everything that happens is because of them, but, you know, that they can be aware that they have options and can make right. choices. Because there usually is an underlying subconscious cause underneath that, that, uh, yeah. you know, being personally responsible is very important. We're going to be going to a break. Everyone will be back in just a few moments. Please stay with us for more of Leah Guy. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Hey, let me ask you something. Would you seat your three-year-old child on a windowsill? Would you seat them beside a lit fireplace or by the deep end of a pool? One last question. Would you seat your child in a car seat that's not correct for them? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Secure their future. Seat them in the correct car seat. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.
Welcome back. This is Sylvia Henderson with my guest, Leah Guy. We're talking about her brand new book that just came out called The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace. And Leah, before we went into the break, you were um, concluding the conversation on spiritual mapping where you were talking about how we really do need to take um, personal responsibility for the choices we make in our life. And that many times there are underlying causes that lie beneath the surface of the conscious mind as to why we really made those choices, even when those choices are uncomfortable and we dislike them. On some level, sometimes they're serving us from a subconscious conscious point of view, because as you said earlier, you might have that crappy job with the crappy boss because deep down below, it keeps you in that energy of being a victim. And so how right. can people um, use this then to move out of that? So say they find um, themselves in a situation that's uncomfortable. They've done the spiritual mapping. They're looking at what they're feeling, um, you know, because I'm sure that there's a lot of anxiety and fear that's around that as well. How do you suggest people use your book to help them through this process? Well, the book is, like I said, it's hopefully a guide for people to start or continue on their path in life, just in general, whether they're on a healing path and whether they're in a crisis or just starting out and seeking about emotional and mental health. Um, so I would say, you know, some people, you can use it differently. Some people read straight through the book and get a lot out of just understanding the whole picture, the dynamic of um, the main ways that we suffer. Some people like to go and, and like I said, just use the symptoms and the, of the emotional symptoms and the physical symptoms to see what resonates most with them and if that might be an area they need to look at that's causing a lot of problems in their life. But in general... I think, um, you know, whether you're using the tools of the meditation or the spiritual mapping, the book is really to awaken and open uh, the eyes and to find a deep sense of acceptance that so many people are not in tune with. And that's partly because of that whole letting go notion, but also just because it's really scary. So in the book, there's a lot of real life stories that I think anyone can relate to. And, you know, and when we relate to others and when we start to uh, acknowledge that, oh, that feels like something I've been through or that I suffer with, then it's easier to accept and to start the process of real change and transformation. So then the book gives like the, the workouts and the meditations and so forth. And it's a process. I say that very clearly in the introduction. You know, I don't believe that anything changes, you know, 100% overnight or sometimes over the course of our lifetime. We're in a continual process of understanding of um, that's the beauty of life, you know, of evolving into our highest self, of gaining more clarity, of growing our compassion, of feeling the pain and understanding a new perspective, of developing empathy. There's so many things that can be gained out of our own healing journey and out of every life experience. And so hopefully they'll use it and apply the tips and the tools and the quotes to inspire them to really stay true to themselves and continue to have the courage to show up no matter what they're facing. You know, it's very easy to stay in bed all day and eat ho-hos and not, you know, not attend to what our spirit wants, but um, especially when life is really, really difficult. And I'm not saying we can't have some of those days, but but oftentimes we get stuck in those days because it's so scary to really face what's going on. Yeah. So that's what the book is about. It's about learning how to have the courage. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And, you know, the interesting thing, too, about it being so scary, it seems to be that what people are most afraid of, afraid of is just feeling their feelings, which is what your book really right. strongly encourages us to do. And I think that that's incredibly vital. We live in a society now where we want to distract and not feel our feelings. And I think that that's just suppressing our feelings and causing all kinds of problems right. down the road. Um, and so, Leah, how can people get in touch with you and, and learn more about you? Well, my website is my name, Leah Guy, L E A H G U Y dot com or modernsage.com. 
that's my product line. And you can find the book, The Fearless Path, on uh, obviously Amazon, but also at Barnes and Noble and Target Online and other stores. Um, I have a meditation CD. I have a whole range of products on my website, uh, but my meditation CD is also available on iTunes and Spotify, and it's um, called The Guided Chakra Meditation and, um, for Emotional Healing. And then I also do a course on the Daily Om, about 21 Days from Fear to Freedom, to help a person that maybe you know, needs more help from the book or just someone who doesn't like to read so much, <laughs> you know, that can work through the process um, in a 21-day course. And that's a very affordable and easy way to do. So there's a lot of ways. If you Google my name, I think a lot of information will come up. A lot of, I've done a lot of media and workshops and writing and so forth. So it's, you know, it's a continuum progressive work. Awesome. That's wonderful. Um, one other question I have for you. Can you explain the difference between mental health and emotional health? And um, sure. why that people often are confused about that? Yeah, well, they, they are very closely linked because our mind translates our emotions. So they're easily confused. Um, and mental health is getting a good deal of attention, you know, as it should, and needs more attention, obviously, with everything that's going on in our world right now. But mental health, um, the true mental health and the disorders of the mind imbalances, chemical structures, um, you know, learning disabilities, uh, uh, neurological issues, and so forth. Those are all issues that are generally, um, well, not 100%, but it's it's being treated separately and individually than emotional health and physical health. Whereas, we, you know, those of us that study and believe in holistic living know that generally most all things at least can be affected by, if not cured by, at least affected by changes in our emotional and physical um, self. Emotional health, which I don't think gets enough attention at all, is more of the processing of, um, you know, our day-to-day -day feelings, how we're responding to grief, um, how we're dealing with self-worth, self-image issues, um, you know, that issue we talked about earlier, like of that passion and creativity. And our emotional health is it's again, it's not separate, but it does need to be viewed as a very important um, component to our mental health and our physical health. In fact, because we process so many emotions almost every second of the day, you know, we're, uh, we're constantly um, f flowing through a different emotional exp response according to an email that we just got or how you know, somebody cooked us dinner and how that makes us feel or a phone call from a friend or making love with our husband or, you know, going to work and not liking the person next to us. Like we're just constantly flowing in and out of emotional responses. And, and to suggest that that wouldn't have an impact on our mind and our physical body is absurd. And it, it really, it has a huge impact on our life. And so um, emotional health, you know, so far, aside from some of these new books like mine and others that are coming out and information and teachers so far, you know, we, we think of emotional health and you go to a therapist and then, you know, if you can't work that out, then there's, there's different names for a person that can't control their emotions or that have emotional breakdowns or what have you, you know, there's just not a lot of support. And, um, and again, that's why I wrote the book because I, I think it's critical that we learn how to first address the emotional health of a person in conjunction with or separate from mental health as a, yeah. as a, you know, system. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, we really do dismiss um, the ups and downs and emotional wavelengths that we travel and diverse every single day, you know, and yeah. uh, cause with our busy, busy lives, we don't give ourselves time to process. And it doesn't go away. It just kind of accumulates over time. Um, you know, one more thing I wanted to ask um, and talk about briefly, and we have a few more minutes left, is, um, you know, when people do experience in their lives um, big traumas, you know, you and I both have 
have had some great experiences in our life. You've been raped. I've been raped. I have two sons with auti profoundly autistic that uh, live in a group home, and that was a trauma. I've gone through divorce, and you know, there's there's big traumas that happen in people's life, and and so for those who are listening, who um, have some big traumas going on in their life right now. Um, what do you suggest would be the most important thing that they could do to support themselves um, in addition to getting your book, but um, you really kind mm -hmm. of like one big first step that you think would be helpful for them? Oh, gosh. Well, I think um, any trauma like and, and like any grief, like any transition, you know, I think the biggest and most important thing to do is really get into our bodies, like start practicing mm -hmm. the presence of now. And it sounds so easy, but it is really difficult, especially when we're emotionally pulled a million ways and we have a lot of anxiety and worry about what may be going on in other people's lives or what might happen if you go this route or what have you. But it's essential to learn techniques, to get in touch with your senses, to be present in the moment, to recognize the power and the reality that you're existing in right now. And to just to hold to that as close as possible. Um, right now, I'm okay. Right now, I'm going to just do simple self-care things. Take a bath. Eat well. Take care of myself. Be thankful for the bed I have to sleep in. Right now, I am okay. And really get into that, that mindset and that, that mode. Because otherwise, it's so easy, you know, to just be swept away into other people's energies, thoughts, emotions, into fear, into anxiety, into depression, and, mm -hmm. and to stay somewhere else. But if we really learn how to get right now, it's, um, it's very, very helpful to heal and to be present to ourselves. And it sends that message to our inner child and our inner self that, you know, we are responsible and we will take care of ourselves and, and that everything ultimately will be okay, even if it doesn't feel okay right now. But it I think will that's be. great advice. So. I mean, you know, you really hit on a big, uh, you know, you really hit it on the head. It's so easy to get swept away when you're in the midst of uh, a traumatic situation by other people's emotions, too, because it's almost like that emotional field just builds and grows. And, you know, right. being in your body is so important. And for those of you that are going through anything like that, you know, I know this isn't the best time of year for this for some parts of the world. But if it is, you know, go out in nature and, um, you know, if you can, if it's warm enough, take off your shoes and really connect and ground yourself to Mother Earth. It, you know, it's um, the planet here is very nurturing when we can reconnect. You know, our shoes are uh, made with rubber soles, and that really disconnects us from the field of the planet, which is very nurturing and very supportive, especially when you're feeling feeling shaken in your life um you know hug a tree if you can't take off your shoes <laughs> but connecting with mm -hmm. nature um is is a way to kind of bring you back into the present moment and back into your body when it when it becomes too difficult in your own home so yeah. um gosh leah it's been such a joy to have you on the show i really appreciate you taking the time to join us and and to share with us your mm, wealth you. of knowledge. And uh, for all of you listening, again, her book is called The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace. And as you know, it's available everywhere where books are sold. It's a new approach to heal trauma, fear, and heartache. And um, also Leah's website is leahguy.com or themodernsage.com, is that correct? Not the, just Modern Sage, yeah. Just modernsage.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh -huh. Perfect. Those of you that are really on the <laughs> social media with Instagram, please do that. And I'm at intuitivetransformations.net. And um, next week, I will have joining us as my guest, Maria Phillip. And we're going to talk about her book, which is called Live Your Happy. Get out of your own way and find love within. And uh, for those of you who are signed up on my newsletter, I want you to make sure that you uh, pay special attention for the one that I'm sending out this week. I will be hosting a uh, monthly energy alchemy 
healing teleconference that is going to focus on releasing the guilt, the shame, and the blame that we've inherited through our ancestral DNA and that we've developed by not dealing with those trapped emotions that uh, Leah and I have been discussing today. Um, please send your prayers to the students that are surviving, uh, that who have survived that mass shooting, their families. Uh, pray for the government of the United States. Pray for the world, that we just wake up to the truth that um, it's time for us to heal from the inside out. And uh, that time begins now. So, Leah, is there anything else you'd like to, to say to the listeners before we close? No, just um, just a reminder. I think you've already said it, but, you know, there's no shame in reaching out and getting help and investing in yourself, whether it's time, money, classes, courses, therapy sessions, healings, meditation, baths. I'm a big fan of baths. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, um, you know, there's there's no shame, and and we all need help and support, myself included, everyone, and we have to to reach out and get it when we can, and that's what life is about. Not only are you uh, sharing yourself with someone else, you're allowing someone else to help you. Yeah, that's so important. You have to take care of you. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Leah, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Know Thank that you're you. loved. You're welcome. Know that you're loved and we'll be back again next week. Until then, take care. Goodbye for now.